So let's look at the Wheatstone Bridge experiment. Okay. Before we come to the theory, let's look at the title. Now, these are your objectives. Okay. So we are supposed to find two things under our objective. Okay. So the first one is to determine unknown resistance. And then the second one, we are finding the resistance in series and then in parallel. Okay. So in series and then in parallel. Okay. So how should we write our title? Now we can write our title this way. Right? We can say that measurement of resistance and verification of the series and parallel wiring of resistors using the Wheatstone Bridge experiment. You get it? Or using the meter bridge. You can also say meter bridge or you can say Wheatstone Bridge. So this should be the correct title of the experiment. Now, let's look at the theory. First of all, in our book, in the manual, this is the only theory we were given. Okay, this is the only theory we were given from our book. That's the only theory. But we are saying that the Wheatstone Bridge experiment or the Wheatstone experiment says that the resistance of the wire of a wire depends on three things. One, the resistivity. So this is the resi resistivity. Two, the length of that particular wire. And then three, the cross-sectional area. So hence, we have all this. Now, if I make resistivity the subject, this is what I'll have. Okay. So let's move on. So from here, right, from this resistance, from this, from this particular one, is the same thing here. Okay. From here, we can say that we make our resistivity over the area a constant. Let's say k. So we represent this and this with a constant k. So we have an expression like this. Okay. Then from there, let's look at the diagram again. Okay, let's look at the diagram. So let's use this diagram. We are using this diagram to explain this. Now, current flows in this direction, right? From negative to positive. Right? In this direction. So it says that I1, so this current, and then this, IR should give us V. So what about, let's say if we have 9 volts here, we apply 9 volt voltage here. What is coming through here is the current, right? And then this voltage, the current here at this particular wire and the resistance here should give us the voltage for that particular resistance or resistor. So hence we have I1 and then Rx should be equal to the current at this particular place, the resistivity over the area of the wire, of this particular wire, and the length. So that's the meaning. So this times this should be equal to this times the resistivity over the area. We also know that resistivity over area is the same as resistance. L, right? So whatever is here equals to whatever here is here. So that's why we have this equation. And then for this second side, it's the same thing. This I and this R is equal to what is here, whatever is here. So we have L here, and then we have I here. And then the resistance in this particular area. The resistance in this particular area is supposed to be the resistivity over the area times the L. Okay. So if you don't understand, you can go over it again and then pause it. Or you can pause the video. I don't want the video to be too long. So moving on, we can divide. Moving on, we can divide equation 1 by equation 2. So that this current cancels out this right then we'll have an expression like this we have this remaining this unknown because all these are the same 
So we cancel the same ones out. Then we have the unknown to be this expression. So when we have this expression, we can make R the subject because we know this, but this is unknown. So we are finding the resistances of the unknown resistors. So we can make R the subject and then it will be the resistance, the known resistor over the length, the length over this length. So this is the theory, okay? This is the theory that you're supposed to write for your experiment one for the Wiston bridge, the formula behind. Continuing from here, I go here, right? I go here. Now, we know that for resistors in series, we just add them. Example, if it's R1, RT should be able to, to be equal to R1 plus R2, right? So that's the expression we are having here. But in our table, it were, they were labeled in the book. They were labeled as A, B, C, D, E, right? Instead of one, two, three. That's why we are using, that's why we are using A and B, right? Okay. So resistance in series, you just add them. But for resistance in parallel, the total resistance, one over the total resistance equals to one over the first one, the first resistance plus one over the second resistance, like this. If this will confuse you, it's also this way. It's the same thing. When you find LCM, right, we will have arrived at this. So you can just memorize this, right? The total, there should be total resistance for resistors in parallel is supposed to be their products over their sum, right? The product divided by the sum. Right, this. So this is what we use to find the resistance in series and in parallel here. This is what we use to find this and this. So let's continue. Now, after that, example, let's say we have this table, for example, right? Let's use these values as an example to understand how we do this. Okay. Now, let's say this is what you had for your values for the table or for the values you measured in the lab okay what you did next to do is you do the calculation right so under calculation we need to find the resistance in series first we find the resistance resistance in series first so the resistance in series they are saying that we should find the resistance in series for only a and b for only a and b right then we also do that for A and B for parallel, okay? So for only A and B, the rest, you are not supposed to do it. So when you take the first value here, right, which is 100, we are saying that when we go back to the theory, we said that resistors in series are just addition. So we just add them. So we take this and this. So resistors in series, we code the formula, this plus this, to give us 300 and then this is how you write the tolerance it's plus or minus because resistors has a range they have a range where they can operate if it's above that tolerance or that range it wouldn't work it means the resistor is spoiled if it's below that range the resistor is also spoiled right so within plus or minus five percent of its value it means that resistor particular resistor can operate so that's the meaning of the tolerance so when we take this plus this, this plus this, which is A and B, we add it, 300, plus or minus this plus this. So this plus this is 10. So plus or minus 10%. And then the units, boom. That's how you find it in, in series. Then for the resistors in parallel, it's the same thing. We can just put this formula straight. Or you can start from here. And then find LCM or whatever. And then you can write here. But I just went straight here. So after quoting this my formula, this formula, it should be the product over the summation. You have 66 point something, right? So resistors values are whole numbers, right? They should be whole numbers. So since they are whole numbers, you get 66 point something. So you have to run it and make it 67, right? That's example for my values 
that's for my value that I used. The values that you measured in the labs might be different, so you use those values. And then you do the same thing for the tolerance, right? So you take the tolerance for the first two, and then you do the same thing you did for this, for this one. So five times five over five plus five should give you 2.5%, right? That's for mine, that's for mine used or my example. So 2.5%, then we can run it and make it 3%, okay? So thank you. And there's no graph for this experiment. So that's a little that's how to do your calculation and then the theory, what you're supposed to write. Okay, devoid writing too much grammar. Theory is supposed to give us formulas, how you go about it. So this is the theory for the experiment. Thank you.